Welcome back to a brand new episode on Front Row on Economy.LK. Uh, we are today in conversation with Arun Kumar, who is the CEO and Chairman of KPMG India. Pleasure to have you, sir, on the show. Delighted to be here, sir. Um, oftentimes, I think you've talked about uh, on your return back to India um, of this new vibrant economy. Um, sometimes you mentioned New India, so to put it. Uh, what is really driving this view that you have? and um, is it more of a long-term trend that you're seeing or is it a very short-term um, cycle that you're seeing? Well, I think that it is going to be a long-term trend. So India has been growing. In terms of size, India has just surpassed the UK to become the fifth largest economy measured in dollar terms. And if you measure it in uh, per, per, per capita, in per purchasing power parity terms, it will be even larger. So two and a half trillion dollar economy. The last quarter it grew at 8.2%. Uh, and the actual growth rate may be a little bit up and down, but uh, I think it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be on the high single digits, if not at some point cross into the double digits. And we should see several years of such growth. Uh, most importantly, in the last year and a half that I've been there, I've seen two major reforms being implemented. The goods and services tax, which made India uh, a common market, the whole subcontinent a common market for the first time. Uh, significantly improving logistics. I think the goods and services tax alone will add uh, a point or so to the GDP of the country because of increased efficiencies and increased internal trade. Second, the insolvency and bankruptcy code uh, allows banks to deal swiftly with non-performing assets. So that's going to result in asset recycling and greater productivity. So it's just two examples of major reforms that I've seen. Thirdly, I see a lot of dynamism in the Indian states. The states are competing with each other to achieve economic advancement for their people. And I, I see that as another factor that's pushing the growth of India. Um, in your, I guess, past role uh, with the Obama, President Obama's administration, you had a good insight, almost a bird's eye view, into a lot of these countries and economies and where some of these trends are going. Um, a few years on, do you see maybe those trends or uh, movements not really materializing, or is it going in a different direction? Um, and what does it mean for the South Asian region and countries like Sri Lanka, which are part of it? So, in the Obama administration, there was a big focus on Asia, so it was called the Asia Review Balance president decided to increase the focus on Asia away from the traditional focus in the Atlantic. Uh, in, in that sense, and, and the Asian economies have been growing. If you were to look on what's changed with the new administration, well, certainly a lot of the narrative has changed with regard to the rules of the road of trade. Uh, they've been emphasizing what they call fair trade in addition to free trade and that's aimed quite a bit at China. So we have seen a lot of actions uh, implemented and suggested against China. Uh, if I were to look at South Asia though, we have not been uh, in the mainstream of any of that kind of discussion. We may have some collateral damage, uh, but I think that's really minor. Uh, if, if anything, I think there's an opportunity for South Asia uh, to engage more bilaterally with the United States, given that the current administration is more focused uh, on bilateral agreements than multilateral agreements. And if you look at, I think, um, this is my final question in terms of digitization and some of the initiatives, especially with, within the public sector of India, um, it's really brought in a lot of dividend to, uh, to the economy. What have been some of these success points and moving forward as well with what's technology is taking us? Are there more programs lined up? Well, digitization in India is uh, becoming pervasive, but it's got a long way to go. Suddenly, both the private sector and the public sector. But some of the um, driving forces have been the use of mobile phones for mobile payments, mobile applications, mobile data access. The Aadhaar program, the unique identity program implemented by the Indian government, essentially creates a stack where that stack provides multiple services including access to your own data so there's a concept of digi locker whereby every every 
person in India can have access to his or her personal information situated in the cloud through DigiLocker. So you don't have to actually carry your driver's license. You can go online and pull it out and so forth. So I'm seeing very imaginative uh, and thoughtful approaches to digitization, whether it's in the area of online permitting at the state level, which helps ease of doing business, or whether it's in the financial sector. And I think that you heard it from um, the CEO and chairman of KPMG India, highlighting why he feels uh, the Indian economy is at a vibrant stage, what will drive it, um, what are some of the trends that have changed over the last few years um, globally in terms of trade, in particular, whether the South Asian region uh, may not necessarily see um, some of these knock-on impacts, uh, just be collateral damage, but maybe there are opportunities to actually uh, leverage on and the digital initiative bearing fruit and it sort of helping the economy as well. Um, so thank you, Arun Kumar. Sure. Pleasure to have you on thank Front you. Row on economy.fi. Thank you. Stay tuned for future episodes like this.